Hello, I am Madhura Rajvanshi. This is my father, Dr. Anil Rajvanshi. And today I am going to talk to him regarding certain issues in life. Okay, Papa, so I will start with my favorite question. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you have never told me? Well, uh, <clears throat> before you were uh, born, I prayed uh, to the higher forces that uh, <clears throat> a great soul should come into my into our house, into our home, <laughs> and I think uh, my prayers were answered. <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh, uh, because if you uh, really pray with a tremendous amount of uh, fervor, mm -hmm. you are answered. Is there anything else? <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Um, what do you think uh, that uh, you? What, what do you think you should have known when you were uh, you were of my you were of my age that you know today? Uh, when he, when I was of your age, I was very ambitious. Mm -hmm. um, also, the fact that I came to a very small rural town, there was nothing. A flat piece of land. This place was so uh, backward or undeveloped. Was uh, to even make a phone call. Mm -hmm. Wanted to hop on the bus, go to Pune, four hours journey from here to make a phone call. So to make something out of my life after uh, uh, doing my bachelor's from IIT Kanpur, going to America, doing my PhD, <clears throat> it was a very difficult choice. But once I had decided, then I wanted to make the best out of it. And in doing that, probably being ambitious, I may have stepped on a lot of people's toes, mm. which uh, in hindsight, I think uh, if I had not done, then life would have been much smoother. And better. But would you like to go back and change that? No, because uh, for two reasons. One is that, uh, first of all, you cannot change. <laughs> Secondly, hindsight is always twenty twenty. And I think uh, if you go through that process, then uh, nothing can be changed. You learn from your experience. Mm -hmm. And I think that is what uh, probably I did. So I would not like to change anything. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was the hardest challenge that you faced in your life? The hardest challenge was that uh, leaving everything. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, when I was uh, uh, on the faculty at uh, Good University in America and coming to rural India mm -hmm. to try try to do something for uh, rural uh, India, that was the hardest uh, thing, but uh, it was enjoyable. Now in um, uh, hindsight I can think it is enjoyable, but at that time it was very um, harsh mm -hmm. and hard because there was nothing here, flat piece of land mm -hmm. in which we had to develop the whole thing right from scratch. <clears throat> Tell me about your happiest, happiest moment. Well, there are a um, uh, lot of happy moments because uh, what is life if there is no happy moments? In fact, you remember happy moments much more. And I think that is the best thing that a person can do is to remember those happy moments. In fact, that gives you a tremendous amount of uh, um, uh, wisdom because if you, anytime you have a, uh, adverse uh, circumstances, remember the happy moments. And if you remember those happy moments, those adverse circumstances also dissolve. So, so there were a lot of happy moments. For example, uh, when I and your mother decided to get married in America, then the, your, your birth and uh, uh, your sister's birth. So these were all very happy moments. And uh, a lot of times when we did uh, well in our work, mm -hmm. and uh, when the recognition came nationally, internationally, they were all happy moments. So there was a combination of all happy moments. So I cannot say that if there was something, one happy moment. Uh, what were the small things that you did for our family that you think made the most impact? I think the most important thing that I did for our family was to interact a lot. Mm -hmm. To uh, have a lot of uh, discussions, talking to both you and sister, all of us just interaction mm -hmm. and I think uh, small small things which are small things uh, sometimes to us mm -hmm. but very important to uh, you because you remember those uh, yes, uh, so-called <laughs> pearls of wisdom yes. for your life. Yes. 
and right. now I give this I try to give the same wisdom to my students because I remember that and now, now when I talk to them I realize that their parents don't spend that much time with them and this is I think the biggest bane in our society mm -hmm. and so is in all societies all over the world somehow the parents cannot talk to the children mm -hmm. and I think the reason for that is that parents do not come to the level of the children and they should try to take the initiative in trying to talk to the children. What are their aspirations? Who are their friends? What are they? We cannot uh, expect uh, to talk down to them. We should treat them as uh, adults. What, what do you think you did differently than your father? Well, for one, um, uh, my... As a father? Yes. One, um, uh, my father never spent time with us. <laughs> I said that uh, I have to spend time because to me you are the future of the country and I have always considered uh, um, as, uh, that this is a very important part of the, of the uh, raising a family. Just giving birth is not after the animals or to also do that. We should pass the wisdom to our children and the only way to do that is by having discussions, having a lot of interaction. <coughs> So that is what I did differently from my father. Uh, would you suggest any role models for me? See, so you are a teacher, so you are also already a role model. <laughs> <laughs> but if I have to suggest a role models, because I've been inspired by a lot of people, uh, and a uh, lot of inventors, scientists, great uh, spiritualists, and etc. And the two people that I would like to uh, suggest as role models, one is Mahatma Gandhi, another was Richard Feynman. Mm -hmm. Mahatma Gandhi because he uh, not only gave, gave us freedom, but he really um, taught us what should be the future of the country. Unfortunately, we are not following it mm -hmm. because he looked at the poorest of poor and wanted to bring him or her up. And that is what you are doing because you, as a teacher in rural India, is trying to do the same thing. And the second was Richard Feynman, who was a great teacher and a great inspirer. He inspired a whole generation of uh, uh, scientists because of his teaching. And teacher is an extremely important person to my mind. In fact, we have a dearth of great teachers in this country. And if we have good teachers, and uh, you are showing already with your films and everything, and you can inspire a whole generation of students. With your teaching. So these are the two role models that I can suggest for you. Any thoughts for me and future generations, maybe my children? Well, um, <clears throat> the only thing I can uh, suggest from my experience is uh, one should do whatever one sh uh, should do, we should do with passion. Passion comes when you can focus. Focus for a long time leads to passion. If there's no focus, there's no passion. Because passion, when you have passion, you know everything uh, stops, time vanishes because the object of passion becomes a focus. If you, if the younger people focus on something for a long time and have passion, then they can achieve a lot of things. And that is, to my mind, is missing. And if one uh, simple uh, suggestion I can give to the youngsters is to have passion and focus. And if you do that, then you achieve something and with time all these achievements add into a whole body of work. And that is a great uh, sense of uh, satisfaction that one gets. Because this is exactly what I did in my life. I did everything with passion. If I had no passion, I would not have never come. I would not have um, uh, made something from a flat piece of land and so on and so on. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>